This is the Infinite Flow Show. The Infinite Flow Show. The Infinite Flow Show. The Infinite Flow Show. Where hip hop, the gospel, and sports intersect. Let go. Every day is calling me like I got two songs. Telling me come sip this link, get in this new zone. You know you want this cause you know you do. It'll make you feel so bulletproof Trying to tell me in the back where I'm meeting, man. Looking at me like great, 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 great. Didn't tell me in the dark they want to keep me there. Looking at me like Che, 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 Che. Trying to throw me off the square, but I can peep. But I ain't sneaking, don't condone, keep it secret. Long as my heart is steady beating, my heart is going to be competing. Instead of walking in defeat, I'm choosing walking in my freedom. You must be kidding me. You really want me to get rid of me? I know my enemy. More than that, I know my new identity. That's Christ in your pity. Listen, we're not lame. No. Listen, we're not none of the terms that people claim. Listen, we're not a cult. No. Listen, we're not bigots. No. Listen, we're not using the gospel for meal tickets. So when you see us resisting, don't think that we trying to judge Ain't you. nobody pretending to be perfect and trying to judge We remember the counters I was used to spend at the club. Listen, I know the plug. I'm just trying to get you plugged, too. Run and tell them that we here. Kingdom business up in here. Rising up like the stocks. But since you broke her, tell me what's the deal. Oh, you boss man, yeah, you top dog, yeah, you living large, getting paid, but the way you living is so costly that I'm here to show you how to save, scratch, here to show you who can save, if you on the edge, he can shave, wait, I meant save, not shave, but he can line you up before you fade, huh, you trying to take the broad way, boy, you acting up, take two, a five, ten, twenty, fifty, or keep it with honey, he's still breaking change, you, feel like I'm back home like Gucci, about to set it off like Bosey. And they don't know I got it, they like, who is he? James told me kind of not joy, but it's straight out the bull like loosely. That's a cheat sheet. Got life like Ray and Claude. No Ray Charles, but I couldn't see Jesus. Got the cue to take the stripes. One shot in the side pocket, no eight ball. Seen at me bound, yeah, them burdens got lifted. Fat as I was, I was still feeling it. I left that way, yeah, they noticed the difference. Godly sorrow led me to repentance. And I know that Christ made me free. They need change, but don't want it from me. Change game. We just trying to change things. Change game, change game, change game, change game. Yeah. Look how you changed up. Time for the change up. Look how you changed up. Time for the change up. Look how you changed up. Time for the change up. My little cousin dropped that, my little partner got knocked in the hood. They don't think I'm concerned with the block. Faith in that coke and they whip it in pots and the devil got eyes on my bear and you fly. So I'm climbing the rope and my click jumping straight up the top. I'm with it, I'm with it, I'm with it, I'm with it. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. I'm with it, I'm with it, I'm with it, I'm with it. Let's get it, let's get it. This one off the top, this one off the top. Somebody that you need to know And we ain't 
ain't trying to keep them on the low Cause y'all don't know But y'all gon' know Cause everybody seen them, they like, whoa We ain't tryna keep me low We just gotta let them know We ain't tryna keep me low We just gotta let them know We just gotta let them know We ain't tryna keep me low We just gotta let them know let me get it from the door. Blood spilling on the floor. We just gotta let them know. They tried to keep them on the low. Ask the great, how did they go? I'm like, whoa. Why you peered in to the piercings? Cause it's weird when I could tear when knowing weird men who would've cheered then when they pierced them. So I'm like, no, but we refuse to be silent. We are not dudes who are quiet. No one you do don't to die from carbs or lord. The bread ain't what you do desire, but why? He to say the truth, will not trade the truth. Came to set fire, we will blaze the booth. And lift our lord up high, then you raise the roof. I'm like, whoa. My God, oh my God, you ain't never fail. I'm like, huh? Man, he cured with his perfect nails. I'm like, huh? My mama said, boy, you a something else. I'm like, I sick in eternity. Like, drive through a Taco Bell. I'm like, huh? He finished the business so we can be in it. Salute the lieutenant. I'm down with no limit. The master was shocked. See, his murder was different. Did you get offended? You get offended? Hot with the O. You look like J. Cole. Natural percentage. Just give me a minute. I got somebody that you need to know And we ain't trying to keep them on the low Cause y'all don't know But y'all gon' know Cause everybody seen them, they like, whoa We ain't trying to keep them low We just gotta let them know We ain't trying to keep them low We just gotta let them know We just gotta let them know We ain't trying to keep them low We just gotta let them know Tell me what you want, what you looking for Our relationship is a civil war, girl I don't wanna fight with you anymore Tell me what's wrong, cause it's been so long And should I wear my heart on my shoulder Don't you wave the flag, I'm not over you Just another love roller coaster Closer I get you like a door She like, I don't wanna be so strong But I think I got it Hard to penetrate this wall that I gotta bend I don't wanna get involved So I keep my guard up Open up these doors So get more than you wanna trust me You had me going crazy If I let you
Father who art in heaven, that's what I'm praying. This world is broken, we need you now, and that's what I'm saying. They'll run up on you with super soap as a naughty land. And they ain't even got water in them, but body spray. I thought we stand back thinking what the world we thank you. Do I really want to raise all of the children that you gave me in the world we make you? I mean, really? They want to redefine the mean and the living. Like it's sitting in the belly with a filly in the backseat with about two, three women. Two, three women. Tie right around in a hundred. So I try to get me come up. Right when I phone your mama. You don't even care about drama. You don't even care about drama. I be praying for the boy that the gang bang. Shooting off with the drama like a lame dang. Tell him like without God it's insane. Put the soul in his hands, you can still change. Lord have mercy. I came up with a real wild. Lord have mercy. Stay round round with that. Yeah, yeah. Lord have mercy. I'm still praying for my hood. Lord have mercy. This ain't running around up no good. Lord have mercy. 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 We the have nots and the might of bench. Trying to go left, trying to red out sin. Till I go left, I'ma fight my sin. We the have nots and the cool kids for the 16. From the pool pit, no pit bull. This day in county, UD. This way in county, no South Beach, just brown sub. Open Town and Lil Haiti. John 15, I know they will hate me. This P Ryan and Homestead. I don't go to concerts, why? Why? Cause the show's dead. Uh, none of my friends wanna ride with a G. I changed my life on high for police. Wanna ride through the streets looking for a lick. Got a baby, I'm married, I'm too legit. Uh, I used to Clean blood, now I'm covered in it. Dead, dead, can't explain, bro. So southern with it. It's like a rat fest, I don't, but I'm running with it. It's like the made hip hop, and no loving in it. I don't care, I'ma talk about my king. Yeah, I'ma talk about my king. Remember, the one who made like everything. Got a lot of fake friends, like the real flake. Truth is, only there for you with the work. Bye bye, that time it be too late. Gay rough flow, I gotta stay away. Yo, breaking that social, but you know I've been real. Been real, sin been killed. The kid been held, no swamp, though. People wanna hear it like pronto. Like my family and my friends got no fans, but it's cool. Get it? I'm a half not and I'm cool. Would it ever remember killing tracks on a cool edit? Now stop with your murky. Now stop with your murky. Uh, now stop with your murky. Tell them dudes that we the half nine. Yeah. Half nine. Off the record, off the record. Yeah. I'm putting on for the record. Uh. Y'all been waiting for a minute. Did. Now I'm back with the records. Yeah. There was stuff I had to get right. <laughs> Bumpy road, gotta hold tight. Yeah. People talking, but I don't mind. I got a vision, but I'm going black. Brennan P, Brennan P. You know it. Nah, nah, I'm being me. You know it. Wasn't always this way. No. Took a while, but I changed. I did. RP, RP, SMG. What? We going viral like a meme. Ain't hey, you know we got the waves. Yeah. I ain't talking yeah. Kanye. Yeah. Hold it back. Whoa. It's okay yeah. to talk. Yeah. Put my feelings on the record. Let you hear my heart. Yeah. I was a dirty soul. So. But he cleaned me right. Get it. Gave me right in my Mornings after all my darkest nights. Wait a minute. Same thing that I started with. Yeah. Taking over, bring the starter kit. Yeah. I ain't in it for the benefits. Nope. I came first and I benefit. Nice. I grew up like a preacher kid. Yeah. All my struggles had to hold it in. But I put it on record. Everything that happened on freaking now you finally hearing it. Off the record, off the record. I'm putting on for the record. Y'all been waiting for a minute. Now I'm back with the records. Off the record, off the record. Yeah. Y'all been waiting for a minute. Yeah. Now I'm back with the records. Off the record, off the record. Off the record, off the record. But I put it on record, everything that happened on record, they be probably hearing it. Everybody wanna be somebody. Giving everything to get a shot to give a little bit of face time. Everybody wanna be somebody. But what if I told you? Say racks on racks on racks on racks, huh? I bet they never told you about that tax on tax, huh? <laughs> Tasha ain't got tracks on tracks, so I put a rap to it. Back to it with a passion to use it for the movement instead of on my back. If you want to shame when you at, Ooh. this kingdom's already, but not yet. We ready, we on deck. Come and get us, Marinetta. They ask me how I'm doing, I say better than I deserve. Cause I got the medicine, I was in sick, now I'm walking up right like Swerve. Ooh. Go on, run about it to the top. Everybody wanna be somebody. To get a little bit of
We hope you enjoyed the music mix. Now we have a gospel message by Pastor Merritt Robinson. Well, as we continue on here in 2 Corinthians, um, we're going to see that Paul is going to specifically focus on the message of reconciliation, how the church and anyone who is a Christian has been reconciled, in essence, has a their relationship reestablished to God. But he's going to talk about this from an eternal perspective. Remember last week as we looked at the first part of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul spoke about the fact that even though as Christians we face affliction, that affliction in comparison to eternity is really nothing. Um, You know, the the affliction that we face um, really can't even compare to what we have in eternity, what God has promised us and what we have on the horizon. And so he's going to continue that, that frame of thought here. And he's going to speak of specific, uh, initially the fear of the Lord and how the fear of the Lord allows us the opportunity to experience that eternal perspective. And note what he says at verse 11. He says, therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade to others But we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. One of the things that you know a lot of people fear is the fear of what happens past this lifetime. There's the fear of eternity. Now, there's a lot of things that people fear, and the word that Paul's used a lot, utilizing here for fear, is a little bit different than the word that we would utilize or how we look at fear. I mean, there's things that we fear on a day to day basis. Uh, my wife always kids with me that I have a fear of heights. I remember one time we were painting our house and we had a second story. And so I was going up the ladder and I've got up about three or four rungs and she shook the ladder. And I was like, what are you doing? I said, I'm up here. She goes, you're barely a foot off of the ground. And so but I have a fear of heights. My uh, oldest daughter has a fear of darkness. Now, she might not say she has a fear of darkness, but she's afraid of the dark. She will turn on lights and leave lights on because she's afraid of of the dark. And especially when she was younger, she was fearful of the dark. And so people have fear, but there are many people who are fearful of death and eternity because they don't know where they are going to spend eternity. They have no assurances of their eternal lifetime. Well, as a Christian, and what Paul would indicate is this, that as a Christian, I have an assurance. I am eternally secure in Jesus Christ. God the Father sent his son to die for my sins so that if I express faith in Christ, then I will have the assurance of eternal life and that I would be in eternity with God forever. That's one of the things that Paul talks about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 because the Thessalonian church was asking what happens to people after they die. And so Paul indicated to them what would happen. He spoke about the fact that at the parousia, the return of Jesus Christ, that Christ is going to return and those who are dead in Christ will rise first. And then those who still remain would rise up into the air. They would meet Christ and they would spend an eternity with him. And so he was assuring the church of their eternal perspective or their, their, their eternity as far as with God. Well, here he is stating the same thing is that we have an assurance and it is found in Jesus Christ. And so as a Christian, we don't have to fear. Now, again, when we think about the word fear, we think of it from the the, from the uh, point of view of being afraid, you know, being a fearful of something or someone. Well, if you look at the Pauline definition of fear, It's not related to anxiety. Again, for the Christian, there is no fear of death or suffering because we know that as a Christian, God is with us. And we know that our eternal destiny relies upon our faith in Christ. And so when Paul talks about fear, Paul is talking about it from this point of view, that 
as a Christian, I know the one who holds my eternity in his hands. It is God. And therefore, because God holds my eternal perspective in his hands, I need to express faith in God because he is the one who controls my eternal destiny. And so Paul is indicating that we should have fear of the Lord because he is the one who controls everyone's eternal destiny. But that fear should be mixed with what? With faith and faith in Christ. If I have a fear of the Lord, knowing that he has my eternal destiny in his hands, and I express faith in Christ, if I believe that Christ died for my sins so that I might be forgiven, so that I might be reconciled, so that God, when he looks upon me, he looks upon me as though he is looking at his son, pure and sinless and holy. If I have fear of the Lord along with faith, then I have nothing to worry about because my eternal destiny is secure. And so Paul is indicating this, that we should have a fear and a faith in the one who controls our destiny. And also we should persuade others to have that same fear and that same faith. That's why he says, therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, what do we do? We try to persuade others. We try to persuade others to understand that it is God who holds your eternal destiny. Now, there are many people who think that they control their destiny. I'm sorry to say that is not the case. It is God who holds our eternal destiny in his hands. But that's why Paul says, but we try to persuade others to have faith in the Lord. Because if you have faith in the Lord, then you will see him face to face, and you will spend eternity with him. And so he says, and we ourselves are well known to God. And I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. And so Paul is indicating the fact that he has a relationship with the Lord, but he also wants these folks that he is speaking to the Corinthian church to also have a relationship with the Lord as well. And so The attitude of Paul and the message that Paul is providing to the church is this. He is saying that we are sharing this. We are sharing this message so that you would know the work of Christ on the cross, what Christ has done for you. And so that you can understand and accept that we're doing this so that we can share with you about the faith that you need to have in Christ. But we're doing this ultimately so that you would understand that salvation is found in one person and one person alone. It is Christ Jesus. And so Paul says, we know the fear of the Lord and we are persuading you. And see, that was the message. Remember, Paul is writing this because there are people who are attacking him and attacking his integrity and attacking the message that he is giving to the church. And he says, listen, the reason we are giving this message is because your eternal destiny is in the balance. You need to understand how it is that you can have eternal life. It is not found in yourself. And again, it is found in Christ, in Christ alone. And so he goes on to say this in verse 12. And we are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. Now, again, Paul throughout this letter is defending himself. This letter is really a defense against those who are attacking him. But he's also addressing some of the questions that the church at Corinth had as these people are coming in and questioning Paul's integrity and his sincerity. And so the church is asking Paul questions as well. And so Paul is defending his sincerity of faith and his service. And note, he says, we are not commending or recommending ourselves to you again. Again, Paul didn't need a letter of recommendation for this church. Paul had spent significant time at this church They knew who he was. They knew his life. They knew his service. They knew how he had a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there was really no need for a letter of recommendation. And so Paul says, 
I am not re, uh, recommendating myself or recommending myself again to you, but I am sharing this with you so that you might remember my work of service unto you, my faith in the Lord. And you can then go back to these folks who are attacking me and you can respond to them. You can boast about us. In essence, you can tell them what we have done for you and for the church here. You might be able to answer them and tell them that Paul does not do this so that he might benefit, but he does it for the Lord and he does it for us, the church. And so Paul says, you need to go back and share with these folks who are attacking me and telling them that it is not about what Paul is receiving, but he is doing it for our benefit. And see, those who were attacking Paul, they boasted in their outward appearance. They boasted in the things that they did, but Paul is boasting in whom? He is boasting in the Lord. And so he is restating his call as an apostle. Paul is indicating that he is not trying to provide this self-recommendation for the church or to prove his integrity or his calling and his apostleship. Instead, his demonstration of fear and faith in the Lord further provided an example of his apostleship. And see, the church has been a witness to Paul's fear and his faith in the Lord. And thus they could provide further defense to Paul's argument and defense against those who were attacking him. And he goes on to say this, for we are besides ourselves or beside ourselves. It is for God. Again, for if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. And if we are in our right mind, it is for you. Why did Paul minister in this way? Again, there are individuals who are saying that Paul is doing this for his own benefit. But Paul in response is saying this, the reason I minister, the reason I serve others is because it's for God and it's for the church. Note what he says, for if we are besides ourselves, it is for God. In essence, Paul is saying this, if I am crazy, if I am out of my mind, literally, I am doing it because of God. I am doing it for Jesus Christ. And additionally, all I do is for your benefit, church. It reminds me of what we, but Paul stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, the very first chapter of this letter. He said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 6. But if we are afflicted, why are we afflicted? Why do we go through affliction? Yes, we know on the horizon that God will provide us eternal life. But he says we are afflicted. Why? For your comfort and your salvation. If we are afflicted, it is for you. It is for your comfort. It is for your salvation. That's why Paul was willing to go through the things that he went through. He did it for the church. And so Paul, as an apostle and minister, he ministered not because of selfish motives, not to fulfill his own flesh, but he did it for two reasons, for God's glory and for the church's salvation. That's the reason he did what he did. That's the reason why he served in the way he served. That is the reason why he carried himself in the way that he carried himself. The question for us is, how do you carry yourself? And how do you exemplify that you have fear in God and that you are faithful to him? How is that exemplified in your life? Do you have a fear of the Lord that people can see? Do you have faith in the Lord that people can see? See, for Paul, Paul could point and say, I have shown, I have demonstrated my fear, my trust in God, and I am walking by faith and not by sight. That's what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. He says, all that we do, even all the things that we see, when things look bad, when things look like they're not going to be beneficial, we walk by faith and we will not by sight. How about you? Can people see that in your life? And so 
I want to be one that like Paul, who says, if we are besides ourselves, if we are literally crazy, the reason we are crazy and out of our mind is for God. I want to be crazy and out of my mind for the Lord. I want to be on fire for him. I want people to see that and recognize it. Thank you for listening to the message from Senior Pastor Merritt Robinson. If you would like further information about the ministry of Infinite Christian Fellowship, please go to www.infinitechristian.com. Once again, that is www.infinitechristian.com. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sis. If you can hear through hip hop, then hear this. Here it is, fresh off the presses, here to lift souls and clear all depression. Uh. Cause I know what it's like when the sun's all shining, but your soul feels night. Feels like you're caught under gloom's dark presence with a little light shining like the moon's sharp crescent. Talk about it. How many days going by when I said I was going to win and I ain't even try? I wake up at half court, the day is half gone, time left on the board is mad short. Rushing my shots, I hurry out the door, I don't pray, I don't take my worries to the Lord. How much time does it take to run the floor? Get the stopwatch, or maybe I should stop and watch the Lord. Colin Kaepernick has been a very polarizing figure for this last couple of weeks. For those who don't know, I'm sure everyone knows who he is, but Colin Kaepernick is a backup quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. He actually used to be the starter, and he had actually led them to a Super Bowl a couple of years ago. But at this point, he's been beaten out by Blaine Gabbert. But Colin Kaepernick has this last couple of weeks or, you know, even going back into, I believe, some of the preseason games has decided to kneel instead of stand at attention for the national anthem. And so that's led many people to criticize him, to malign him, to say some pretty harsh things, um, saying that he's not American or he's un-American in his actions. And, you know, people, even in his hometown, have been critical of his actions. And what I wanted to do is not necessarily speak about Colin Kaepernick, but really wanted to focus more upon what he's actually speaking out against. And some of the things he's talked about are liberty, justice, and freedom. And those are the three things that I'd like to speak on, you know, in this segment is what does it really mean to have liberty? And what does it mean to receive justice and be and to be free here in the United States? One of the things that I looked at is, for example, the Pledge of Allegiance and our national anthem. And some of the wording is very, very critical. You, you, you really have to understand what is being stated. When it says one nation under God, and when it talks about with liberty and justice for all, is that something that has been received by all Americans? Is it something that each and every American has really had the opportunity to, you know, receive and to, to, to benefit from when it talks about the land of the free, is that something that all Americans have had an opportunity to experience? You know, I think about, and I know oftentimes people will say, why are you going back into the past? Why are you talking about historic history? And why are you talking about, you know, from a black perspective, what happened with the slaves from the early 1600s all the way up into, you know, the mid 1800s? Well, here's the thing. Our history dictates what happens in the present and into the future. It's kind of like the story that I've heard a, a gazillion times where this uh, mom is cooking Thanksgiving dinner and she cuts off the ends of the turkey and puts it into the stove for it to cook. And her daughter says, mom, why do you cut off the ends? And she goes, I don't know. And so she calls up her own mother and she says, hey, mom, um, your granddaughter is asking me, why do we cut off the ends before we put the turkey into the oven? And the grandmother says, oh, I did that because it wouldn't fit into my oven when I was cooking. And so I would just cut off the ends and that way it would fit. And so what we see this mom 
doing is watching her mother as far as how she cooked. And it gets translated down from a historical standpoint. Well, it's the same thing with just history in general. Things that were done hundreds and hundreds of years ago still have impact and ramifications on us today in this present time and into the future. So it's really hard to to say, okay, well, let's not talk about the past. But quite honestly, we do have to still talk about the past. What what happened to blacks in the 1600s, 17, 1800s for 250 plus years still has ramifications today. It's still pertinent today. And so when you think about liberty, justice, and freedom, for a black person, it means something different than for someone who was white, who has had that experience, who's had the the opportunity to really experience freedom and justice and liberty. And so what I think Colin Kaepernick is trying to do, and maybe many others are trying to do, is really open up a conversation and, and ask, what does it truly mean for us here in the United States in the year 2016, 2016, what does it really mean to have freedom and justice and liberty for all individuals, no matter what color you are, black, white, brown, Asian, it doesn't make a difference. What does that mean for us? And I think what it truly means for or I should say, maybe even more importantly for a Christian is what does it mean to experience justice and liberty and freedom? And how is that projected out into our families, our communities, the individuals that we see on a day-to-day basis at work, in ministry, whatever the case might be. And I think we need to really take a look at what is happening within the culture Because at this point, you can really look out into the landscape of our nation and in our culture, and you can really see there's a division between black and white and brown. There's a separation. You know, one of my friends said, used to say this years ago, and I heard it, heard it most recently, that Sunday is the most segregated day of the week because you have your, your black churches, your, your Latino churches, your white churches, your Asian churches, um, uh, those of Jewish heritage, they will go to synagogue. And so there's such a, a, such a separation when it comes to race and religion. And one of the things that I find so, I guess, enlightening in regards to, and hopeful, maybe is a better word, in regards to the gospel is there'll be an end to all of that. As the apostle Paul indicates in, in his, in one of his letters, there is no Jew or Gentile. There's no male or female. There's no slave or free. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if we will ever get there in this time realm in this, in, you know, here on this earth, uh, I, I'm, I'm fortunately and, and not to be pessimistic, but I don't think we're going to see the fulfillment of that until the return of Jesus Christ. But it would be awesome to see the United States. It would be awesome to see the people in this nation. And more specifically, it would be incredible to see those who are uh, call themselves Christians, ambassadors of Jesus Christ, if they would stand and say, you know what? Because we are Christian, because we are our people who find themso- themselves under the autonomy of God, that we truly stand for righteousness and holiness, which means we stand for freedom. We stand for justice because justice truly means a peace and genuine respect for people. It means that we want to see equity and objectivity and honesty and righteousness for all people. We truly want to see liberty. We want to see people have the opportunity to be free from restraint, 
to have the opportunity to speak up and kneel if they want to kneel or kneel or not kneel and stand, but having the freedom to do that without being called un American or unrighteous, but to stand or to kneel because they are committed to their convictions. And I truly believe that's what it means for us as Christians that, you know what, we are going to be committed to our convictions and we are going to be committed to liberty, justice, and committed to being free in this great country that we call the United States. Thank you for listening to this episode of our podcast. We will have new episodes every two weeks, so come back and join us for the Infinite Flow Show, where hip-hop, the gospel, and sports intersect.